What does the Indian Accounting Standard 27 talk about? It says separate financial statements, interest and other financial services because that is the main source of income. You cannot substitute A versus B at any point of time in Accounting Standard. Good morning and welcome to the session 8 under unit 2 in IFRS where we are going to speak about the statement of profit and loss consolidated financial statements. It's been quite a very, very impressive session all about knowing how the statements are actually making a difference in terms of the company accounts altogether. But then the statements have their own importance and value. They have their own significance altogether. So let's move forward and try to understand their meaning. Now, at the introduction level, let me just first introduce you to the various accounting standard 27, 28, IFRS 3 and IFRS 10. What does the Indian accounting standard 27 talk about? It says separate financial statements. That's very, very important. Why? Because the statements that are being told here are trying to make you understand that each and every statement will have its own values, will have its own significance altogether. So that's why we are talking about the separate financial statements here, followed by the investments in associates and joint venture companies. So whenever a company is going to make an investment, to any of its pigments, to any of its ratios altogether. Now we are going to talk about that investments in associates and joint ventures, followed by the business combination. Now business combination is very, very important. Why? Because in IFRS 3, we are going to talk about what are the various combining factors that join hands together in order to understand the consolidated financial statements followed by the consolidated financial statements itself in IFRS 10, which will speak you about all the financial activities that are being done by the company and which are going to be presented to the public. Moving forward, the general instructions for preparing the statement of profit and loss. Now, this is what has been given in the Ministry of Corporate Affairs under the Companies Act of 2013. So they are also in reference in tandem with the IFRS and that's how they have given this factors altogether. Now if you look here, the provisions of this part will be applied to the income and expenditure account referred to in sub clause. What are the sub clause? of 40 in section 2 in the manner they apply to the statement of profit and loss. Now the second point here, in respect to a company other than finance company, revenue from operations shall disclose separately in the notes revenue, sale of products, sale of services, operating revenues. Now what we are going to do here is that in a company perspective, other than finance company, the operation shall disclose. What is the operation going to disclose you? any sale of the product because sales is the top line of the accounts. So how much have you sold in a given year altogether matters a lot in terms of understanding. So sales will give you the top line view of the company which is very very important for each one of us to understand followed by sale of services. Now what is sale of services? The sale of services will tell, for example, you are an IT company or you are working in any of the service oriented organization. So what will happen here is that you will try to talk about the sale of services, consulting services, IT services, IT enabled services, all those services that you have been giving it to the customer. The sale of services will be recorded here, followed by other operating revenue. Suppose you are operating in any other sector, any other business format, any other vertical altogether. From that segment also, you will be getting the revenue. So that is where this factor comes into picture. Followed by what are the things that you are going to deduct the exercise duty. The exercise duty is very, very important in respect of a finance company. Revenue from operations will also include 
interest and other financial services because that is the main source of income that you can talk for any of the finance companies. So for them, this will become a very, very important perspective altogether. Now that will go and talk about whatever the interest that is earned from the factors and what are all the other financial services that they have gained altogether. Revenue under each of the above heads shall be disclosed separately by the way of note to the account to the extent applicable. Very, very important point. Why? Because at any given point of time, whatever might be the revenue, whatever might be the factors shall be disclosed here. Followed by the general instructions for preparing the statement of profit and loss. Now, how is it being prepared? Finance costs shall be classified as interest expenses because when you are paying interest, there is some expense. Other borrowing cost, if the company has borrowed money, so there will be a borrowing cost. Applicable net gain loss on foreign currency transactions and translation. Very important. Why? Because these days when you talk about MNC companies, having their operations in abroad, there will be definitely exchange of services, exchange of goods, which means there will be some foreign transactions involved, which will talk about the net gain or loss factor altogether, followed by the other income that is coming in. Other income shall be classified as net interest income that is coming in, in case of company other than finance. Now we will be talking about the dividend income, net gain or loss that's made on sale of investments, other non-operating income that is coming in from. So what is happening here is that if you look here very carefully, what they have tried to talk about is the interest factor first, then they have talked about the dividend factor that is coming in, the net gain or loss made because of sale on investment. Suppose you are selling some product or you are doing some gain, automatically that will be counted here followed by other non-operating income altogether which are directly attributable to such income because those are very very important factors that one has to understand from the income standpoint. Moving further, let's talk about the other instructions that has to be followed, the additional information in terms of preparing the profit and loss. A company shall disclose by the way of notes additional information regarding aggregate expenditure income on the following items that is employee benefits expenses showing separately, salaries and wages, contribution to provident funds and other factors, expenses on employee stock option, employee stock purchase plan, staff welfare expenses. Now these things are very very important for each one of us to understand. Why? Because when you start looking at the additional information here, a company shall disclose by the way of note additional information regarding aggregate expenditure, employee benefits, whatever employee benefits has been given, salaries and wages because these are all extra factors that has to be added up. Contribution to provident fund that is the PF what we are talking about is a very very important function because that's an expense that's going on here and the employee stock option scheme that has been given and the depreciation factor. Now if you start seeing amortization anything has happened any item of income or expenditure which goes ahead by 1% of the revenue from operation that is about 1 lakh whichever is higher and the interest income these are all the additional factors which will be calculated in the profit and loss statement. Now moving forward we are also going to talk about where a company is required to prepare consolidated financial statement. The consolidated balance sheet and the consolidated statement of profit and loss, the company shall take a mutandus that is following the requirements of this schedule as applicable to the company in the preparation of balance sheet and statement of profit and loss. In addition, the consolidated financial statement shall disclose the information as per the requirements specified in the applicable accounting standards that includes the following which is obviously given there because it says that what are all the factors that we are going to include 
profit and loss attributable to the minority interest very much important and the owners of the parent in the statement of profit and loss shall be presented as allocation of the period minority interest in balance sheet with within equity shall be presented separately from the owners of the parent so these are all the factors that one has to understand very very clearly in terms of what is happening when you are preparing the consolidated financial balance sheets now when you are also talking about the preparation of financial statement that has to comply with the Indian accounting standard that means to say that every company to which the Indian accounting standards apply shall prepare its financial statements in accordance with this schedule or with such modification as that might be required. So we are giving that flexibility where compliance is within the requirements of the acts including the Indian accounting standards as applicable to the companies require any change in the treatment or disclosure amendment act altogether deletion in the head or subhead or any changes inter se in the financial statement that has been required forming the part and therefore the requirements will be managed accordingly now what we are trying to say here is that one side when we are following the ifr is the other side we are also trying to say the compliance standards as per the indian accounting methodology has to be followed and wherever the treatment regarding the accounting standard wherever the disclosure wherever the notes have to be given wherever the functionalities have to be told all the relevant information has to be presented on time and everywhere so that they are able to process it and they are able to take it forward moving forward we also need to understand that disclosure requirements specified in the schedule are in addition to and not substitution of the disclosure as I have already told you before it is not a substitution it is only an inclusion you cannot substitute A versus B at any point of time in accounting standards what you can probably do is that you can add something extra you can make a note you can make a disclosure all those factors but you will not be able to go further and talk about it similarly all the other disclosures as required by the Companies Act of 2013 shall be made in the notes in the addition to the requirements as that has been told by the Companies Act. So that is why we say that at any given point of time, whatever might be the requirements, whatever might be the factors that will be told here and that has to be added as per the Indian accounting standards. Now. The financial statement shall contain the corresponding amounts. What are the corresponding amount? Comparative immediately preceding the reporting period. So when I write 2012, 2013. So what I am doing is that I am putting the corresponding amount. Comparative statements that you can see. What has been the changes with respect to the previous year. And this will also include all the items shown in the financial statement laid before the company after the incorporation now followed by the financial statements shall disclose all material items the items if they could individually collected or influence the economic decisions that are used on the basis of the financial statement so materiality here depends upon the size and nature of the item or the combination of both so it is a combination package it will consist of each and every item that are put together as one single package now the other thing is that the general instructions for preparation of financial statement that will also include the terms used here shall have the same meaning in Indian accounting standards so we are not trying to change the meaning we will not try to do anything new again whatever is that value the same meaning we will have it in the Indian accounting standards we are not going to change the name or the paragraph or title at any given point where any act or regulation requires a specific disclosure yes we will do it in standard financial statement they say that the disclosure shall be made in addition to those required under the schedule so that is where this will become a important statement altogether now the general instructions that you need to do is that any entity shall classify as an asset 
in current only when it expects to realize the asset or consume it so only when you are able to realize it or consume it you will be able to come here now in the case it holds the asset primarily for the purpose of trading so i hold the asset and i'm going to trade it for a value i'm going to exchange it i'm going to sell it for a value it expects to realize within a period of 12 months that is within the accounting period if i'm going to realize it yes this is going to work out for me followed by the asset is cash or a cash equivalent unless and until it is restricted by the norm so this also has to be coming in an entity other than this shall be classified as non asset altogether non current asset so anything that is realizable by the company within that 12 months given time period and if it's going to be in cash cash equivalent then we are going to talk about the current assets or it will be get classified as non current asset now the other factor that we need to talk about here is the operating cycle which is entirely the time between acquisition and the factor of realization of the cash that has already been told so it is going to be only for 12 months within this 12 months is the realization time period entity shall be classified as a liability when it will be classified if it expects to settle the liability in normal operating cycle again within that 12 months if i am going to settle it down or it holds the liability primarily for the purpose of trading so in the case of any trading i am holding back an amount or i am going to do some trading activity then it comes then the liability is due to be settled within that 12 months or within that reporting period altogether then we are going to talk about it in terms of the general factors or else we will not classify it now with this i come to the end of the session i hope and believe that all the information that has been shared through this session is of a great help and resource to you in the upcoming sessions we will be seeing more about ifrs from the accounting standards and how it is helping the indian companies until then stay tuned stay blessed and stay enlightened forever thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful day